So now that we have Angular, we can start using it. Let's create a list of parties. So let's create here a list that um, contains each item will contain a party's name and a party's description. So first of all, let's create the controller. Let's define the controller scope. Let's call it parties list control. And then let's use the ng repeat directive to repeat a, an array. It's actually it will repeat, we'll have a parties array, and for each part inside parties, it will print another li. And in each li, we will define a parties the current party's name and the current party's description. Okay, so now let's start with defining our Angular app. So let's create a new file called app.js. Now, everything that we will write on this file will be executed also on the client and also on the server. So the Angular code we will need to execute only on the client. So the way to do it is to use the meteor.is client uh, variable and put, to put it in a state like that. So let's say if we are in meteor.is client, everything here, here will be running on the client. And if meteor.is server, everything here will be running on the server. So let's start with defining our uh, Angular app and then bootstrapping it. So first of all, to define a new app, we will define a new model. Let's start with that. Let's name our app socially. And this app is dependent on the Angular Meteor model. Later on, we can add another depend dependencies. And let's bootstrap this. So we want to bootstrap it when Meteor is, is already started. So we have the Meteor startup. And here, let's start our app. Now we need to define our controller. It's, it, this will also be in the client. So let's add the controller to our uh, socially app. Let's name it parties list controller. define its dependencies in a way that it can survive the minification of the code. And now let's just define a simple parties array. Each object will contain a party's name. And a party's description. Now let's create a few of those. Sorry for the lack of imagination. And now 
let's run it. We don't our, our everything is already running, so we can just go here, go to localhost, and we can see that Angular is automatically duplicates the li and puts it on on here. But this is very simple. And this what we can do with any app. The great ability is that Meteor give us. Uh, something Meteor Angular can give us something that we can bind our our our, uh, our models all the way to the database. So let's do that. And first of all, the way to do that is to actually to use the collection service that is defined here on Angular Meteor. So let's add it as a dependency. And now, let's use it. So we're going to use the collection.bind function. Now, first of all, to define the collection itself, we want to use the parties collection. So before we do that, let's define our parties collection. Let's do it here, outside of um, outside of the if statements because the collection will be defined on both client and server and then all the actions on it will be run first locally on the mini mongo on the client and then later on on the server and Meteor will take care of synchronizing those two um, those two together so let's create parties Now that we have the, the we have the collection, we can go here and define the collection that the that the service will be working on, and this is the parties collection. Now, the bind method is actually is binding the the that collection into a meteor into a angular scope uh, variable so first of all we need to define the first uh, parameter is the scope that we want to define if we want right now we want the, the current scope but we can also define the root scope or a different scope depends on when we use it and then we need to define the second parameter is the um, is the collection itself we want is the array itself that we want to use so we want to use the parties collection we put it its name as a string and then the next parameter is is, is the auto bind the parameter what that basically means it means that if we put here true it's default for false but if we put here true then uh, we are watching also the angular changes and automatically syncing them back into meteor so everything in any way, in every change in the Meteor collection will propagate into the Angular collection, but if we will put here true, that anything we will do to change the scope parties uh, array will also automatically be synced into the Meteor Mongo collection. And the next parameter that we'll put here true will also default to false is the subscribe uh, a parameter which means that uh, we will automatically subscribe to the to this collection in the client and we won't need to subscribe in a different way uh, more on subscription we'll talk later so right now we have the angular connected straight to the meteor collection now we do want to define the meteor the we do want to define all of those in the Meteor, in the MongoDB itself. So, inside the server, let's first check when Meteor starts. Mm. 
then if we don't have any party let's add those parties in so we're checking parties count then Okay, so when you start the application, if there's no parties, we'll define, define them here, and then automatically, because we are binding everything to the front end, we should see it also in the in the in our client. Let's check that our app is running. So let's look here and even refresh, and you can see that we are still we moved the variables into the server and now they are defining defined here and also if you would look in the other browser the same and every every change that we will do into the to the this uh, array will propagate automatically to the server and then to the, all the other clients and we will demonstrate it now <laughs> 